Hey guys, Sean Ray here with another report for Muscle Fitness and Flex Online. We are talking about the Mr. Olympia. The 55th anniversary of the Joe Weider Mr. Olympia takes place September the 12th to the 15th. And the rumor bill is alive and well. I've been inundated with a lot of DMs about my boy Phil Heath. And will he or won't he? A lot of people see Phil Heath walking around looking pretty monstrous these days and want to know whether or not this guy's competing in the competition. Well, it was only a year ago, or barely a year ago, maybe 10 months ago, that Phil Heath said after he lost the Mr. Olympia that he was going to take a full year off, let his stomach recover. He had two back-to-back -back surgeries following his Mr. Olympia competitions, and this was the year he was going to take off in order to let that heal. However, fast forward to this summer, Phil Heath takes off over to England, He's looking every bit off season, getting ready for competition. And now with four weeks to go, he looks like he may make a run up to the Mr. Olympia circa 1980 when Arnold Schwarzenegger showed up in Sydney, Australia as a reporter and then boom, jumps in the competition to everyone's dismay. He wins his uh, record setting seventh consecutive or yeah, not consecutive, but seventh Mr. Olympia. Nonetheless, he had a five year hiatus from 75 to 80. And he walks off with the Mr. Olympia title and into the record books. Now, can Phil Heath do the same thing? If he does, he'll walk into the record books and tie Lee Haney and Ronnie Coleman with a, a record-setting eight, a record-tying eight Olympias, should he win. But uh, should he lose? The, is that it? Like That would be the second consecutive loss for the seven-time Mr. Olympia. Would it be all over for Phil Heath? This has got to be a calculated move on Phil Heath's part. If Phil Heath seriously is thinking about going into the Mr. Olympia competition and beating guys like Brandon Curry and William Bonick, who have not taken their foot off the gas, uh, he's going to have to make sure that he is dotted the I's and crossed the T's. The knock on Phil Heath like a year ago was the stomach. Stomach distension, stomach bloat, uh, just didn't bring that same uh, swagger to the Olympia stage. However, from the rear, I had Phil Heath Mr. Olympia. That is half of your body. You turned around to the front. And naturally, the stomach is tied into the front of a bicep, side chest, side triceps, all of those poses, and you just couldn't get away from what was happening with Phil Heath's stomach. Now that we've all acknowledged that Phil Heath had a stomach issue, the one person that never really fully did is Phil Heath himself. Phil Heath himself still has not acknowledged that he actually lost the competition on one pose, on one body part. Well, it happens, you know. Uh, I thought Dorian Yates should have lost the Mr. Olympia because he had a torn bicep. And I thought Chris Dickerson probably shouldn't have won the Mr. Olympia because he had a torn bicep. Um, there are things that bodybuilders bring to the stage that are intangibles and you can kind of get around it. Phil Heath could not hide the issues going on with his stomach. Because the previous year, the stomach bloating was severe, but he wasn't challenged as much. Uh, and when, of course, he lost a year ago... It was so blatant that you had to take the title from him and reward the challenger for their improvement. Now, that all that stuff, get it out of the way. Phil Heath comes to the competition. Um, does he come in confident because these are guys that are lesser than him, that he's beaten all of them and none of them have ever beaten him? Uh, it's a lot to ask from a guy that's not been in championship training. And I don't know that you can go into the Mr. Olympia not 100% committed to the cause starting back in January and ramp things up with a few months out from the Mr. Olympia contest and think that you can do that. Otherwise, you know, Kevin Lavroni would have won a couple. He's notorious for taking months off at a time and then ramping things up in the summer, but he just didn't, he wasn't able to do it that last couple of months. And, uh, and for good reason, because the Mr. Olympia is a, is a whole year process. And uh, Dorian Yates and of course the guys that have won it, Ronnie Coleman, Lee Haney, they can attest that these long breaks, uh, they weren't part of their vocabulary. They didn't take breaks and time off. So Phil Heath right now, with the door being slightly open and ajar, with the, the defending champion not in the show, uh, with father time ticking away as Phil's turning 40 years old, my assessment of Phil is that he has everything in his tool set to be Mr. Olympia. There's no question. He gets on stage, he beats everybody from the rear, uh, including Big Rami, who was, or not Big Rami, but including Roly Winkler, who was the fan favorite last year, Arnold Classic champion over in Australia and has won uh, third place a year ago. R Roly can't hold a candle to Phil's back. Brandon Curry, as much as he has improved, does not stand next to Phil Heath in the back double bicep, especially in the hamstrings. Uh, and William Bonek has got a very good, solid, compact physique, but it's much too small for Phil Heath. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is that if Phil Heath shows up at the Mr. Olympia contest, we can have a new Mr. Olympia. But that is a big if 
And that hasn't come from Phil Heath himself yet. So stay tuned. Get your tickets at www.mrolympia.com. September 12th to the 15th. Those questions will all be answered by Phil Heath showing up or by Phil Heath sitting out. Either way, the Mr. Olympia looks like it's going to be wide open. For the Sean Ray Report, I'm Sean Ray.